Starting off our list at number 10, food blogging. Okay, so anyone who's ever tried to take cool photos of your food and make them look like the photos you see on Insta knows it's actually pretty hard. And usually it involves you standing up on a chair like this in order to get that perfect overhead shot. How else are you gonna get that shot? It also involves you moving everything around on the table to make sure that your composition is out of control. And this whole process is definitely a trip when you're doing it in public. <laughs> We've all been at a trendy cafe or restaurant and when the food comes out, everyone gets out their phones and takes photos. Everyone's making a scene and then before you know it, your food is cold. <laughs> oh, you've been there. You've been there. You've either been observing or you've been that person, don't lie. <laughs> At number nine on our list, you're not actually on vacation. This guy on the toilet with the Eiffel Tower behind him. Only it's actually just an Eiffel Tower figurine. Classic. I'm not sure if anyone has actually done this that I know of, but you guys know from my past videos that huge influencers with hundreds of thousands of followers have faked photos of themselves in iconic places like New York just by photoshopping the New York skyline into a photo. You also might see this photo of the Great Wall of China on Instagram and think, wow, I really want to go there and take a photo like that. And then you get there and you realize everyone else wants a photo like that and the entire place is crowded and full of tourists and you can't get a photo like that. <laughs> I fainted on the Great Wall of China once, fun fact. That was, that was nice. I ate a red bean popsicle to get my blood sugar up. <laughs> and at number eight, your kids are not little angels. I feel like many millennials are getting to that age where either you're married with kids or you're single and playing the field. And putting your career first, as I like to call it. I don't know about you guys, but my Instagram feed is literally filled with pictures of my friends' kids. And when I say friends, I mean people I took dance class with when I was 14 who I won't unfollow because I'm too nice, so now I get to enjoy daily pictures of their kids. <laughs> Listen, I love kids. I can't wait to have kids. I would love to have my own kids. But when that's all somebody posts on social media, like we get it, you're proud of your children. But we all know what you guys had to go through to get those perfect pictures of your kids. Most of the time, they're driving you crazy. Like I like babies and I like holding babies until they start crying and then I'm like, you can take that back now. <laughs> and I want it. <laughs> it's, you, you know it's true. <laughs> At number seven on our list, you didn't wake up like that. Let's be honest with ourselves, it's entirely possible to look like a completely different person when we're all made up for the gram, and then when we're just chilling at home in our PJs. Now I actually feel like Trisha Paytas is real with her followers, which is why this screenshot even exists, but it's not just Trisha. A huge chunk of the time, women are looking more like the photo on the right over here than the photo on the left. It's normal to put your best foot forward on social media and post pictures that you look the best in, with the best lighting, your makeup is done, your hair is done, you're looking like a snack boo. It doesn't mean you don't look anything like your photos in real life, but I mean, come on. We've all pigged out on the couch without makeup on, messy buns, watching Netflix, not giving a shit what we look like and who's looking at us. Future husbands, take notes. We look ugly sometimes. <laughs> we ugly. <laughs> Not me, I'm gorgeous all the time. <laughs> At number six on our list, we got the Instagram boyfriend. If you've got a significant other that's an influencer or maybe they just love being in photos, you know that you're usually the one taking the photos. That means that whenever you get to a beautiful restaurant or location, a lot of the time, the first thing a girl wants to do is take a photo. On behalf of all girlfriends, I apologize to all the boyfriends who we've put through the endless ordeal that is taking the perfect Instagram photo. My last boyfriend used to get so mad at me whenever he had to take even more than two photos of me. Whenever I didn't like a photo of myself, he thought I was criticizing his photo taking skills and I wasn't. Understand, gentlemen, that it is not you, it is us. And sometimes we have to take dozens of photos before we find one that's postable. It's not just about how we look in the photo, it's the composition, it's the lighting, it's the pose, it's the outfit, it's like, does my glow show up in this photo? Is that photo gonna look good with the rest of my photos? Ask me that very stupid question because it's, it's important, it's important to us. <laughs> when in doubt, take more pictures, which leads me to my next point. Just just take like 200 of those things and they're bound to like one of them. Honestly though, like how hard is it? You just press a button. Halfway there now at number five, deleted pics. Anyone who's ever taken photos for Instagram before knows that you never just take one. It's always like a 10 minute ordeal. I follow this Instagram influencer who always has the most beautiful photos on her feed. Everything is perfect from her outfits to the lighting to the composition. It's amazing. But I found out that this influencer takes 100 to 200 pictures every time she's at a location. She then narrows it down to three to five photo options then picks the photo that looks the best in her feed at that time. There are hundreds of options that she doesn't like that aren't postable. So remember that in order to get that perfect photo you see on Instagram, that influencer and whoever is taking the picture are spending a lot of time trying different things to get that shot. 
There's literally an entire camera roll of like rolls, squishy arms and awkward faces that you're not seeing. Oh my god, and this goes for boomerangs too. Every time I am drunk at a party or a bar and a friend is like, let's take a boomerang. Hell no, I'm not about to be caught up for the next half an hour taking a crappy pixelated boomerang when I could be enjoying myself. Always say no to the boomerang, friends. <laughs> Unless you're sober. <laughs> it's like, is it like, is it like you're trying to like clink your glasses together and it just looks like every time. All right, and number four, we got the power of posing. All my ladies know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're wondering if the photo on the left had a little alteration, neither of these photos are edited, especially not the one on the left. If you know how to pose and you're wearing the right outfit, you can magically make it look like you've dropped like 20 pounds. Remember George, my friend George? Yeah, he likes to come out when I'm sitting down, I've had a long day and I can't be bothered to stand up straight. Pro tip, that is why it's best to shoot bathing suit photos in the morning when you're perky and you haven't eaten anything. <laughs> this second photo also illustrates my point. Does anyone else like stick out their tummy as far as it can go and just like pretend to look pregnant? Just me? It's my food baby, guys. He's so precious. At three on our list, not so perfect skin. Okay, listen, this next one is not to hate on people with acne or anything like that. I actually had brutal acne when I was growing up and I didn't get rid of it until I went on Accutane. So if you struggle with that, ask your doctor about Accutane. Sh is gold, but don't get pregnant on it. These two photos show just how easily you can be fooled by a photo. Makeup gurus are always using Facetune to cover up their imperfections, yet at the same time they're showing off their skills as a makeup artist. Everyone has parts about them that they are insecure about and with Instagram, it's pretty easy to pretend those insecurities don't exist, at least for everybody else. On the other hand, with the case of someone with acne scars, it must feel nice to just get to escape from that part of yourself and just feel beautiful. I would completely understand wanting to put a version of yourself on the internet where the focus is not your scars or your pimples, but everything great about you too. At number two on our list, we got fake fitness gurus. We all follow a fitness guru, most of us do. I know I follow a few, and if anything, you've come across fitness accounts on social media that feel more like a collage of humble brags than a fitspiration account that's intended to get you to the gym. Sometimes when I see those posts, it like it does motivate me to go to the gym. Other times, not so much, hashtag unfollow. <laughs> but how is it that all these amazing fitness gurus look amazing when they're working out and the rest of us look like sweaty, nasty potatoes? <laughs> oh, and by the way, this goes for guys too. When they're flexing and they're taking those mirror selfies and they have control over what their body looks like, it's pretty easy to look ripped. But as soon as you're not flexing and it all hangs out, well, uh, yeah, suck it in guys, suck it in. Or just let it all hang out, that's what I like to do. And at number one on our list, you're not that thick in real life. Oh yeah, I said it, shots fired. Listen, most girls are familiar with the token Instagram poses that like make our butts look bigger and our waist look smaller. Oh yeah, the Kylie Jenner pose, like come on, we all know how to do that. My friend Lisa has this one that's like, and like she hides her tummy with her arm. So it looks like her waist is like this big. It's so genius, guys. You're all gonna use that. Call it the Lisa. <clears throat> I've said it before and I will say it again. I feel like like this pose, that's the Instagram pose. The one where the Visco girls crouch. Those photos make guys online think that girls are way more thick than we are. They scroll in through Instagram and Tinder and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, she tick, she tick. And then we show up to dates looking more like the photo on the right over here and guys are like, oh, whoa, okay, I thought you had an ass. Oh, sweetie, no, no, no. Gotcha! <laughs> Number 10, you are not actually an influencer. The Federal Trade Commission is cracking down on influencers who don't clearly indicate when a post is sponsored. But there are no current rules around fake sponsorships, which is why you're seeing so many of them on social media. There's a lot of influencer fraud going on right now where wannabe influencers are faking sponsored posts and gifted products to make it seem like they're paid influencers. We all follow someone who's posted something along the lines of, love my new mascara from Marc Jacobs. Little did you know that wannabe influencer is part of a program called Influencer, a free program that rewards positive reviews on websites with free products. Sure, it's a legit program, but it's a program banking on how badly people want to be influencers. Marc Jacobs did not give you that mascara. You got that mascara for free from Mascara. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> All right, in at nine, you're not that healthy. Just because you're posting about your healthy eating habits on Instagram, that doesn't mean that you're eating that way all the time. People love to post their beautiful avocado toasts and their acai bowls. <laughs> I can't even say acai without like hating my life. But they are rarely posting about their fridge visits in the middle of the night where they're scarfing down entire packages of prosciutto. 
Just me? Oh, I ate a whole package last night in my sleep. It was lit. <laughs> in at eight, you're not that rich. We all know a clout chaser. Maybe you follow a couple, but I'm not sure if you know how easy it is to fake being rich on social media. The next photo perfectly demonstrates that. You might recognize it as being part of an Instagram experiment by Byron Denton, where he faked being rich on Instagram for an entire week. The verdict? It was too easy. If it's this easy for Denton, imagine how easy it is for people not being honest with you about their fake luxurious lives. In at seven, we got tagged photos. It's always awkward when you're putting up altered images of yourself, yet there's other images of you that exist online, specifically in your tagged photos or story posts. If your friends are gonna be posting photos of you on your night out together, make sure you're also getting them to Photoshop you too. Otherwise, if people are following both you and your friend, the real you could get exposed. Like with the case of this woman in the yellow dress. The photo on the left is what she posted to Instagram. The photo on the right is a tag photo her friend posted. Coming in at number six, we got face filters. I like a good face filter. They're a heck of a lot of fun. The trouble comes though when you're only putting photos of yourself and videos of yourself on Instagram with a face filter on. And then that face filter like glitches or does something weird. Like with the case of this photo. If you look closely, you can see that her eyebrow and eye is defying the law of physics and showing up outside of her hat. Do you guys remember that Chinese streamer whose face filter glitched? and then her subscribers saw what she really looked like. And at five on our list, all that makeup doesn't look good in real life. Of course, this excludes professional makeup artists. We all know you know how to contour, honey. But have you ever noticed that when you see a person with a lot of contouring in real life, it just sort of looks like they have bad theater makeup on? So in my senior year of high school, I played an elderly British woman in a wheelchair in the school play, and I had to do my own makeup for this role. And I spent a couple of hours before every show filling in my cheekbones to make my face look sunken. So now when I see people with contour, that like heavy contour on their face, all I can think about is theater makeup. I also have this friend, I'm not gonna name her, but she's a Twitch streamer and she contours her nose to make it look smaller. It doesn't look smaller, it just looks like she has like dirt all over her face. <laughs> At number four, you're not that clean. We all like to pretend that we aren't messy people on social media, unless you're Jocelyn. That girl is so impeccably clean, even her desk at work doesn't even have like a single speck of dust on it. But the vast majority of us have to clean our entire houses just to be able to get that perfect Instagram photo. Either that or you can take advantage of this wonderful thing called cropping. These photos show exactly how easy it is to crop a photo and make a scene look picturesque for Instagram, when the rest of the scene is, well, Disgusting. <laughs> Coming in at number three on our list, you're not that happy in your relationship. I feel like getting to share photos of you and your significant other on Instagram is a lot more fun than actually being in a relationship. <laughs> Definitely not a relationship hater. I love being in a relationship, but there's something fishy about those happy photos couples always post on social media. According to recent research, posting a lot about your relationship online might actually be a sign that you're insecure about your relationship, either about the relationship itself or maybe you're insecure about your partner's feelings toward you. Marriage and family therapy Jennifer Marsh said, oftentimes they're looking for positive attention in the absence of getting the reassurance from their partner. And that's true with anything, right? Someone that's constantly posting photo after photo might be masking how they really feel. Research also shows that if you're not posting about your relationship a lot on social media, you don't have something to prove and you're actually a lot happier in your relationship. In at two, Instagram models are not real models. Say it louder for the people in the back. There's a reason why there's a difference between an Instagram model and a real high fashion model. When you have control over every single photo you post, the lighting, the makeup, your outfit, your hair, the angle, it's pretty easy to look at like a 20 out of 10. Like a 20 out of 10, maybe like a 23 out of 10. Meet Meredith Mitchelson, an influencer and Instagram model with 1.8 million followers. But Meredith was hired as an actual model for a runway show and uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, she just doesn't look like she does in her photos. Of course she's still beautiful, but this is what happens when you're out here pretending to be something you're not on Instagram. The sad thing is Instagram models and influencers make a heck of a lot more money than traditional models, and they get a lot more recognition too. And at number one on our list, you do have pores. When you're scrolling through Insta, it's pretty easy to think that everyone on earth is better at doing makeup than you and has better skin than you. But it's not until we see close-ups taken by red carpet photographers that are not retouched do we really see the truth. Here's a photo of Kim Kardashian on Instagram versus a high definition close up of what her skin actually looks like. Here's another one of Katy Perry. Of course, when you're actually seeing these people in person, you're not gonna like analyze every pore on their face. In unedited photos and in certain lighting, imperfections stick out like a sore thumb. The point is, everyone has pores. Everyone's skin moves 
and that will eventually create fine lines. Or heck, if you're an expressive person and your face moves around, you're gonna get little lines here and there. It's totally normal. In at number 10, we got the romantic spin photo. You've probably seen pictures like this on social media. There's definitely been scenes like this in movies as well. It's taken from the perspective of the person who's spinning their lover or friend in the park. But what did it take to actually get a photograph like this? Well, I'm going to show you, and trust me, it is funny. The photographer is piggybacking on the lover with his hands out, and he's the one holding the camera. He also kind of looks like a koala. You also could maybe get this photo with a GoPro on your helmet, but you would have a hard time framing it because you can't see it. In at number nine, a fake trip to Paris. From this photograph, it looks like this woman is standing on a Paris rooftop in front of the iconic Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is out of focus, so you can't see what's really going on, which is She's standing in front of a poster of Paris and the photographer made it so that you couldn't really tell she wasn't there. Slap on a filter and boom, boom. It just shows how easy it is for photographers to create visual stories like this. It's pretty harmless. It's not like they out here lying on social media to prove a point or something like that to have this fake life. But it's just yet another photo that proves that not everything you see on Instagram is truthful and you shouldn't always trust what you're seeing in a beautiful photograph. What you see in the photo is not what's actually happening behind the scenes. In at eight, the perfectly imperfect wedding photo. Creative photography is a lot of fun. You can actually play with light if you know how to. Take a look at this photo of a happy couple on their wedding day. From the picture, it looks like these two just got married and it started raining. The groom then takes off his blazer to protect his new wife's hair from getting wet. It really is a really beautiful picture. Look at all that lovely bokeh from the rain and it looks like a candid photograph also. But what you don't know is this picture is totally staged in the best way possible. Here's another angle of the scene. They got one of their friends to spray water with his mouth in front of a camera lens, which means the bride probably got covered in spit. <laughs> and if you look in the background, there are a ton of other brides and grooms, which probably means this whole photo shoot was staged for a photographer's portfolio. Nothing wrong with that. Weddings are a great part of the business, but the only way that you get brought on to shoot a wedding is if you can prove you have already shot a wedding. Future husbands and wives to be, take note. In at seven, we got the power of a good crop. You've probably seen photos like this on Instagram. It's pretty darn impressive. Not only does this guy likely do about 200 sit-ups a day, he's hanging from his feet from a ledge. This photo would easily go viral on Instagram. But what you don't see is what's going on in the rest of the scene. As you can see, that rock is not over top of the ocean and you won't die if you fall. Which definitely isn't as cool or as impressive as hanging by your feet over a 100 foot drop of doom. Do you see all those people lined up to take the same photo? I'm definitely gonna be that girl on the rock just like clutching to it for dear life, even though there's only like a foot of space. In at six, we have lighting is everything. These two photos show exactly how the right lighting can make a huge difference in how sexy you look on Instagram. The photo on the left was taken at golden hour and the right taken, I'm not sure when it was taken, but you get my point. <laughs> difference between how he looks in the photo on the left and on the right. If you don't know what golden hour is, it's that time earlier in the morning when the sun is rising and also in the evening when it's setting. It's that lovely golden light that makes a blanket over the horizon. Golden hour is prime selfie light time, hashtag no filter, highly recommend. Halfway there now at number five, Kris Jenner looks weird without Photoshop. The photo on the right is a photo that Kris Jenner posted to Instagram. The photo on the left is what Gordon Ramsay posted to Instagram. One is Photoshopped, the other is not. Do you notice how weird Gordon Ramsay looks with all that blurring going on? Okay, and do you see how weird Kris Jenner looks unphotoshopped? We've become so accustomed to seeing Kris Jenner with filters and Photoshop that she looks about 30 years older without it. Which is fine, dude. The woman built an empire and every single one of her kids is famous and rich in their own right and so are her grandkids. She did a hell of a job. She has nothing to be ashamed of. She's a grandmother now. She's not supposed to look 20 anymore, which brings me to my next point. In at number four, we got the White House portrait. The photo on the left is Melania Trump's official White House portrait. She doesn't look a day over 30. The photo on the right was taken by paparazzi. She looks far more her age, which is 49. Many of her critics feel like Melania is your stereotypical trophy wife because of how young she looks next to her husband. But you have to remember that she's also close to 50 and she looks amazing. I think most of us have grown accustomed to seeing more photos of Melania like the one on the left where she looks way younger. Don't get me wrong, Melania is stunning and she always has been, but isn't it weird how we've seen so much Photoshop and Facetune in our lives that we could look at a photo of Melania on the right and be like, whoa, she looks different. 
Her White House portrait is so heavily photoshopped it doesn't highlight her beautiful smile, something that maybe she sees as a flaw, but I sure don't. Gotta love those laugh lines, they cute. In at 3 we have Gabby Hanna's fake trip to Coachella. Back in April of 2019, Gabby Hanna went viral for showing just how easy it is to fake a trip to Coachella Music Festival. Over the course of Coachella weekend, she posted several photos of herself wearing cute Coachella-esque outfits at typical Coachella locations. But the backgrounds were actually photoshopped in by photographer Kellen Hendry. She also wore fake Coachella wristbands. Sure, she might have come out and told everyone that it was all a social experiment or whatever the she said, but she still got all the clout first. It was like two waves of clout. First people were double tapping because they thought Gabby was at Coachella, and then they were double tapping because she came out about lying about her trip to Coachella. Oh my god, yay Gabby! You so funny. <laughs> In at two we have Instagram versus TV. These two photos of Kylie Jenner were not taken that far apart from each other. They might not have been on the same day, but they were definitely a few days apart. That girl changes her hair about as often as I change boyfriends, okay? Just kidding, I'm lonely. <laughs> Ronry. I am so ronry. But just bear in mind that all of Kylie's Instagram photos are meticulously edited. She is beautiful in real life and I'm not lying about that, I genuinely feel that way. But the photos of Kylie you see on Instagram are very different than Kylie in real life. And Kylie on TV. And at number one on our list we have people facetune their kids. Oh yes, oh, this actually happens and it happens a lot more often than you think. Check out these photos. At first glance, these photos don't look that different. But if you look twice, you can see that the influencer who posted this photo edited her daughter's nose and butt. They made her nose smaller and her butt bigger. What are you doing? Why are you like this? This little girl was four years old at the time. If she can't keep up with societal beauty standards and she's four friggin' years old, how the heck are the rest of us supposed to keep up? Imagine being brought up in a world where this kind of thing is okay. And guess what? This isn't the only example. Kim Kardashian was accused of it too. She said that she posted the photo on the left after she saw it on a fan page and didn't know it was photoshopped. But as you can see, 5 year old Stormy's tummy is a lot flatter in the photoshop version. Ew, that's gross. 